Now, the moon may be rough, let's say, but Mars surely is a little bit easier. Of course, it's a lot further away than the moon, which makes yep. it harder. That's why uh, I'm sure NASA would love to go to Mars, but Artemis is going to the moon instead. Yep. But you know, Elon Musk says that he wants to die on Mars and not on impact. That's right. It's <laughs> very easy to do the former and the latter, not the former. So Mars has many, many benefits over the moon. It has an atmosphere. It's pretty thin. But it's still a lot more than the moon. You can get by with a much thinner spacesuit on Mars. You don't have to have this huge thick insulation because of the huge temperature range. Yep. Uh, and the atmospheric pressure means just something to cold your body and stop it bursting out because of the low pressure. Yep. Um, you can't breathe the atmosphere and it's very cold, but it's a lot easier. The, the thin atmosphere protects you from a lot of the radiation. Not all of it. It's still a bad radiation environment. You're still going to want a bit of shielding on your habitation. But again, better than the moon. But walking around on the surface for longer periods of time is actually far more feasible with much less onerous spacesuits. Yep. We know there's lots of water. That's uh, right. frozen. Um, and there's more things too. You can go look for that life forms that we were exactly. just talking about. And yes, it is far, but if you're moving to get away from the Earth, is that necessarily a bad thing? And in many reasons for moving away, might, being further away might be a benefit. Yep. I know my uh, parents always think <laughs> they're living in England and you know, Australia is about the right distance to be away from me. And, <laughs> Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe you want to get away from, if you're, if you're I mean, like many colonists in the past, they've been fleeing from something and yep. maybe the moon is just too close. Exactly. So there are many benefits to being on Mars. Um, it's still not particularly nice. Yep. I mean, you're still going to be living in a armored shelter and... Um, Radiation but, sickness is still a worry. Um, but, but a lot of people have speculated that maybe we could make Mars better. Okay. I mean, you certainly could build a colony on Mars. It's, it, it has the purpose, and it's got everything we need. Yes, it does. It's got the hydrocarbons, it's got the minerals, it's got sunlight. So you can build a self-sustaining colony. So your goal is to have a self-sustaining colony to protect, to give the humanity a, a safe haven. Technically, you can do it on Mars. If you want to escape a political regime on Earth, you can do that on Mars. But still, I mean, given a choice of living on Earth and living on Mars, I, yeah. Mars would be exciting for a bit, but living indoors and looking at red dust all the time. Um, but maybe we could make Mars better. Okay. This is a concept of terraforming. The idea that maybe some point in the future, this is not near future, no, that's right. we could actually try and make planets better. So the idea we were doing it on Venus. Yep. Um, uh, Carl Sagan famously had thought that maybe you know, Venus is so up because of this runaway greenhouse effect. Maybe you could introduce some cyanobacteria that would break down the carbon dioxide. If you got rid of the carbon dioxide, the temperature will drop to more reasonable amounts. Yep. That turns out to be not possible because there's no hydrogen, so no water. Yeah, yeah. The hydrogen was all lost, which you didn't know at the time. But maybe you could divert a million, million comets to supply the water and then do cyanobacteria to cool down Venus. But that's going to be a very big ask. But so, Mars, Mars yeah. is a bit easier. It, it does seem a bit easier, but what do you actually have to do to do it? Well, we know that Mars was warm and wet you know, four billion years ago yep. when the sun was fainter than it is now. So it should be easier now than it was then okay. to warm it up. We know that there's somehow, we don't know the details, there was some sort of greenhouse effect back then that That's made it right. warm enough. And maybe the minerals are still around to do it. Okay. So people have looked into this. Um, one idea would be to pump out some extremely potent greenhouse gas, much more potent than carbon dioxide or water vapour, yep. and chlorofluorocarbons. Okay. These are now banned on Earth because they were destroying the ozone Yes, layer. that's right. But quite apart from destroying the ozone layer, they're also extremely potent greenhouse. Okay. But the idea is you would want to create more greenhouse in this case. Yes, yeah, so you, you take all those mothballed CFC factories from the Earth and ship them to Mars, or more likely build new ones in situ. Um, and actually, if you release the amount of chlorofluorocarbons on Mars, at had actually been manufactured on Earth in old refrigerators, that would be enough to get a pretty good greenhouse going. Okay. Maybe it's still not enough to bring it up to abo above zero, but might be enough to melt all the carbon dioxide ice in the poles. Yep. And then that's going to be another greenhouse gas that would make it a bit warmer. Still probably not enough, but then maybe you can again direct, redirect some comets to give a few more volatiles or start melting the oceans or something like this. Maybe put some giant mirrors in space to warm it up a bit. And some combination of pumping out the most on Earth would be the worst things to pump out the most potent greenhouse gases you can possibly imagine. Let's uh, do it on Mars! <laughs> yes. We could maybe bring Mars up to the level where it starts being above zero and actually you start getting oceans and uh, um, uh, hydrosphere going. Bring Mars back to life. Bring it back to where it was. <laughs> Make Mars great again. Yes. So, I, I guess the question is, all right, it sounds like it is possible but this there is no way this can be happening anytime soon right 
That's true, that's true. So this is, if you're going to colonize Mars and Lithium, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be dusty and red. Yeah. And, um, but if you start getting a few million people living on Mars, they would have a very strong incentive to want to that's true. terraform it. Yep. Um, of course, this is kind of assuming there's no life on Mars. If you do find the bacteria under the surface of Mars, maybe we will sort of leave it to itself and not interfere with it by introducing huge amounts of human stuff in. That's right. Uh, but if there's no life there, then maybe it's okay to go in and uh, try and make it better. Mm. But there's humans still... have a long, rep long reputation of making places worse. <laughs> it surely has a few examples of that. Oh, yes. Um, you know, and, and as we explore a bit in the space section, you know, it is still technically hard even to do some of these basic things, let alone terraform the planet. And so it's kind of this idea where it makes sense on paper. And I guess if you have a really big incentive, the alternatives are probably worse. So you give it a go. But it's not the uh, illustrious holiday I think we may be picturing anytime soon.